the digital production buzz at the 2015 NAB Show is made possible by supporting sponsors. Shutterstock, a global marketplace for royalty-free images and videos. With over 2 million royalty-free HD and 4K video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. And by One Beyond, leaders in digital video systems for streaming, archive, and storage. Additional sponsors include LarryJordan.com, helping media pros find work, improve their skills, and keep clients happy. Beaming live from the 2015 NAB Show in Las Vegas. Media. Technology. News. Insight. Connecting media professionals around the globe. This is the NAB Show Buzz Live. And welcome back to day two of the 2015 NAB Show in Las Vegas, Nevada. My name is Larry Jordan, and this is the Digital Production Buzz. We are live on the trade show floor with some of the most amazing guests you will ever see in one place at one time. But I have to mention this tweet from Olivia Harris. She writes, thanks, DP Buzz. You got the best tweets and video coverage of NAB, and that's all due to the incredible team of producers and engineers and reporters we've got working here in the booth. This show is amazing because of the quality of guests we've got. We're going to start with Andy Liebman. He's the founder and CEO of EditShare. And we're also going to talk with Russ Abeline. He is the VP of Marketing of the Tiffin Company. And we've got a couple surprise guests coming, which I'll tell you about a little later in the show. By the way, we're doing live shows three times at 1030 at 1 and at 4 o'clock all three days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. On Thursday, we'll do two shows at 1030 and 1 because they close the show at 2. Otherwise, we do one at 4 as well. But you also want to pay attention to our special evening reports. This is a one-hour show every night posted to iTunes and to the NAB Showbuzz uh, website, which has got all unique interviews. Everything is different. More than 90 people we're talking to here in just three and a half days. The digital production buzz continues after this. This is Larry Jordan. I'd like to introduce you to one of our sponsors, Shutterstock.com. They're a global marketplace for royalty-free images, videos, and music. Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. Whether it's for your website, a publication, an ad, video, or any other type of project, you can choose from over 2 million royalty-free HD, even 4K stock video clips. These include time lapses, aerials, green screens, and model-released video. Take 25% off your first purchase. Go to Shutterstock.com and use offer code NABBUZZ15. That's N-A-B-B-U-Z-Z-1-5 and... If you're attending NAB in person, visit Shutterstock at booth C1727 in the Central Hall. It's all at Shutterstock.com. EditShare is a technology leader in network shared storage and tapeless end-to-end -end workflow, much more than a server. They bundle some incredible software with their shared storage. Andy Liebman is the founder and CEO of EditShare, and Andy, it's always a delight to welcome you back. It's always great to be here. NAB would not be the same without Larry Jordan. Uh, you're very kind, and you can say that more than once. <laughs> EditShare has made a career out of adding some wonderful software tools to what is otherwise a commodity server. But for people that haven't been paying attention, describe what EditShare does. Well, EditShare provides really a whole end-to-end uh, -end workflow solution that includes uh, SDI and file ingest, centralized storage, media asset management, video editing, playout, archiving and backup. So really all aspects of what you need to create and uh, broadcast a production. Now that's a lot of work putting that together. Why do you decide to go to that extra effort? Well, we want to make the lives of uh, our customers easier. We, we try to 
uh, turn workflow upside down with, with every chance we get. We really, our, our mission in life is to make workflow easy, to allow as many people as possible to collaborate in the production process. Which only gets more difficult as we start to move to higher resolution media and higher frame rates and codecs, which are much more dense, like raw formats and ProRes 4x4. How is EditShare coping with this shift from HD into Ultra HD and sizes beyond? Well, all of our storage products, even the, the smallest one, is able to support uh, 4K resolutions. And, uh, you know, a standard 16 drive server can even handle uncompressed 4K. We're talking DPX, we're talking maybe 40 megabytes per frame of video. Uh, it, it is possible to do 40 this. 40 megabytes per frame? Yes. That's depressing. It, <laughs> it's a lot of storage. <laughs> yes, but uh, w what we've gotten into now, uh, we, we're introducing here at NAB a, a whole new part of our storage product line. It's called Extreme EFS, and that is an enterprise class, fault tolerant, scale out storage system based on the edit share file system, hence EFS. So what does enterprise class mean to you? Well, it, it means that it has the kinds of features that an enterprise operation expects, right? So Wait, aren't filmmakers enterprises? Yes, well, we're talking big enterprises. But, but I, I, I would like to point out that what we've done is we've introduced Extreme EFS at a price point that brings the most rock solid steady file uh, storage system down to the level that it's affordable to just about everybody. And uh, so I, I can tell you a little bit about Go ahead. what a, an enterprise class uh, storage system is all about. No single point of failure. Scalability. Uh, uh, so you can add storage nodes. This is a node-based Expandable. It's a node-based system, so you just keep adding new nodes and your data gets redistributed as you add more storage and your performance keeps increasing linearly as you make your, your file system bigger. Uh, that, that's very important. No single point to failure, meaning that anything in the system can fail and your editors don't even notice, right? So an entire node can fail. Your editors don't notice. Your metadata controller can, can fail. Your editors don't notice. That, that's what is enterprise class. Most, most production companies are not accustomed to having such a reliable system. They weren't affordable. We've made them affordable. Now, is this just a single product, or is this part of the operating system which goes to the entire product line? Well, so at the moment, this is just one aspect of our storage product line. In fact, we've rebranded our storage product line now. It's all, all extreme. Right? We've, we've, we used to have a product that was called Extreme. Now all of our storage products are called Extreme. We have Extreme EFS, Extreme HT, Extreme ST, which is a new smaller size unit rack mounted for smaller companies that really can't get into an enterprise class offering and are portable, are field. Well, I was just going to ask about the portable. We're doing, I don't know, 15 hours of programming in three and a half days and then poof, we're gone. Would the portable system work for something like this? It would have been perfect for you, yes. Hopefully you'll use it next year. Hopefully we will use it next year. What else have you got that's new? Well, the, the other thing that has us very excited this year is uh, our offering in what we would call the private cloud space. Okay, so EditShare has always had a media asset management product called Flow. It allows you to log and tag and search for your assets. It provides a window into your backup and archive. But uh, what, what's new in Flow is, uh, is, is part of Flow, we call it Airflow. And uh, it's kind of out there in the air, right? It kind of reminds us of the cloud. Uh, <laughs> but what, what Airflow is all about is being able to access your content anywhere in the world. That's, I think that's what most people mean when they talk about wanting a cloud solution. They want to be able to get to their content no matter where they are, whether they're uh, in somebody else's office, in a hotel room, in their house, and so what we've actually decided to include Airflow now with all of our extreme products. So everybody who buys an Airshare storage system can give uh, collaborators or customers access, some access to content from the outside, whether it's for review and approval, whether it's for help in selecting the best shots, whatever uh, help making transcripts. I am such not a fan of the cloud, but we don't have anywhere near enough time to talk about that. How do you handle security? 
Well, it, it's it's a uh, user login based security, of course. So you, you know, not just anybody can get into the web page that is your private cloud. But uh, we also we are recommending that most of our customers buy a, an actual second physical server, store it in the premises, and then it allows people to access it from outside. Yes. So you, we're doing that with your first server, right? Your storage server. We're allowing. If you want to turn on that capability, we're allowing you to say, okay, people from the outside can access that one at a time, perhaps. But yes, the, the, the correct answer for security is to have that functionality on a different server. But what we want, we want to let our customers understand how valuable this is. We think they're going to come back to us and say, this is great. Now I want to do it in the most secure way possible. I'll buy that other server. Very cool. Andy, where can people go on the web to learn more about the products that you've got? Oh, our website, www.editshare.com. That's all one word, edit, E-D-I-T, share, S-H-A-R-E, and Andy Liebman is the founder and CEO of Edit Share, and we need to spend more time together. This has been fun. Thanks. We do. Bye-bye. Thank you. Beyond loaned us the video gear we're using to present the buzz at NAB. We're using three One Beyond StreamCam PTZs for our live cameras and the One Beyond Stream Machine Pro to switch, add titles, encode, stream live, even record the show for later posting. The Stream Machine is portable, the size of a briefcase with a convenient handle, built-in screen, and keyboard. It includes four HDSDI inputs, so it's easy to set up anywhere and begin broadcasting. This one unit replaces all the gear used in the traditional switcher, recorder, and coder configuration. Also new at the show, the One Beyond StreamCam Auto Tracker. The Auto Tracker automatically follows a speaker with no camera operator required. One Beyond has a new way to experience a multicam event online. The One Beyond U-Switch player lets the viewer switch between cameras in their browser, live, as they watch. See all of these at OneBeyond.com. Now, you may think of the Tiffin Company as those guys that make camera filters, and that's a true statement, but it's nowhere near complete. That's what we want to talk with our next guest about. His name is Russ Abilene. Abilene. Hang on, I'll get it. Abilene. Abilene, that's correct. His name is Russ Abilene. He's the <laughs> VP of Product Marketing for the Tiffin Company, and the Tiffin Company's been around for 75 years, and what they make will surprise you. Hello, Russ. Good to have you with us. Good to be here. For people like me who managed to screw up the script that he himself wrote, tell me about what this Tiffin Company is. Tiffin Company's made up of several different brands, all that revolve around the camera. So basically, the Tiffin Company is an accessories company. We have brands like Steadicam, the Tiffin Filters, obviously, of course, there's also low light, uh, there's um, list tech teleprompters, donkey bags, tripods. There's a number of different products within the Tiffin brand. Low light is the Tiffin company. Yes, it is. Hang on one second, just tweak that in a bit. There we go. Now, what caused Tiffin to expand beyond filters? Well, the whole idea basically is what we want to be is the answer to the person who has the camera. So again, we're really looking to accessorize the, um, the total imaging experience outside the camera. That is very cool, but that would require you to create stuff for the camera. All the time. And that would mean that you've got new stuff here at NAB, which we gets do. me to what you got that's new. Well, I'd like to start out by talking about some Lowell products. Okay. Lowell Pro Power LED. Oh, this is, is so cool. Look at this. Look at this. Yeah, this is actually, um, we, have, we originally invented the GL1. But now we've got the Pro Power LED, and the Pro Power LED is a product that is both dimmable and focusable. So by just simply sliding the head forward. Like this, push it. Oh, push look it at forward. that. The light focuses. Look at that. All right. There's a dimmer knob on the back, so you're allowed to you let, oh, enable yeah, you to dim the. There's a knob back here. Look at that. Dim the product. A dimmable LED. Dimmable LED. And this is a real traditional Lowell product in the sense that it's um, very easy to accessorize. 
The power, power. in-source, in, mm -hmm. yeah, the power uh, is a uh, four-pin mini XLR uh, input. But, uh, but again, going back to the traditional Lowell product lines where the key to Lowell was location lighting, kits, and, and kits, accessories. And what we've been able to do with the Pro LED is we now have a, a, a system that allows you to put on soft boxes, it allows you to put on gel frames, uh, umbrellas, so it be able, able to enhance the whole lighting experience. Because again, with what's happened kind of in the LED world is that we've been doing a lot of flat lighting with all the panels that are out. And what, um, what Lowell has always done is uh, been able to control light. And in the LED world, it was a slightly different uh, operation. And what we needed to do was come out with products that would allow you to control light, and that's what the Pro LED is all about. Now, the big challenge we have with LEDs is most of them are daylight. Are we, and most of the lights that we're used to from Lowell is tungsten. Are we, handling, are we shifting to a daylight-based LED, or do we have the ability to dial in tungsten? We basically have two separate units. One is a daylight unit, one is a tungsten unit, uh, concentrating on output. Uh, again, uh, the old adage, more light is better, is still relevant in today's camera world in the sense that um, even with cameras that are faster, you still want to get the maximum amount of light. You want to be able to control that light, and thereby what we've done is we've got dedicated daylight or dedicated tungsten fixtures here. Having just finished building our own studio and wrestling with the issue of not enough light, we are a firm believer that you can't <laughs> have enough light. Yeah. Yeah. So all you've got for us is a new light. Oh, that's it. Tiffin has just got a single new product. No, in. no, no. We've got a couple of other things. Lowell is all, also is uh, de debuting here at the show. Uh, prime location. Uh, prime location it is, a, is a panel type light, but it's a heavy duty panel light. It's not just your average one by one. Uh, this light carries an IP rating of 65. And the 65 rating, of course, means that it uh, is reached the highest standard of dust particles being able to get into the, to hurt your electronics. Um, the 5 is a, is a water standard, and what that allows is actually this product to be used in hurricane force type winds. I mean, it winds and rain. <laughs> it's crazy. We have, we have broadcasters that are now putting this light out in a permanent fixture outdoors. You know, the wow. weather guy who's got to go out with the, you know, the, 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 it's got to be out there in the hurricane. Is now, one quick question, because sure. I know it was a big issue a couple years ago. There was an issue of LED licensing of who could and could not make LEDs. Has that issue been resolved, and do cameramen need to worry about that at this point? To my knowledge, I think that that's all been kind of taken care of. Um, you know, the the idea around LED is, is more of a technology challenge than anything, and I think that most of the, the big boys have kind of fought that out. I mean, Philips certainly has a number of licenses, and so do a whole bunch of other folks, but um, it seems to have worked its well, way out through the market. Okay, in the minutes we've got left, what else we got? Well, the other thing I've got is um, this is actually uh, the latest mount for our Steadicam product line. Wait, and wait, wait. A Steadicam product that doesn't have a harness and doesn't strap around, doesn't weigh 725 pounds? Exactly. Who is making and this? We're actually, we are making Look this. Look at this. Look at this. It's got a little grip on it. And I could be wrong, but is that not a cell phone on there? It is. It is. A Steadicam for a, <laughs> a cell phone? Well, as you know, a lot of folks today are trying to create content, <laughs> and, and very good content, by the way. Uh, with their iPhones or their smartphones. Look uh, at that. And what we have done at this point is we've come out with a universal adapter so that you can actually use any of the smartphones uh, onto our, our smoothie, which is the smoothie's a, a great product, very, very smooth operation, um, and, it, and it really uh, lives up to the Steadicam brand. Uh, is this released? Yes. And uh, I'm, sorry, the, uh, I'm sorry, the universal mount will be out in early August. Have you announced pricing? Uh, we have not announced pricing. And same. pricing on the Lowell LED? Yeah, the street price on the, just the unit itself uh, is around $600, a little less than that. Uh, but the key to that, again, is the kits. So we have a three-light kit uh, that includes all those accessories I talked about, the barn doors. But the it's interesting thing is we've got, a lot of us have LED, uh, Lowell kits and have for a while because they last forever. Sure. Can we just buy the light and add it to our existing kit? You can buy the light and add it to certain portions of the kit. The, the umbrella will still work in here. Um, it just buy the power supplies and, and those types of things. The gel frames would still work. Um, sure. That's very cool stuff. Yeah, we, we're, we're proud of it. You should be. Where can people go on the web to learn more about the products you've got? It's all at www.tiffin.com. So tiffin.com is the parent site, and we can get to all the different products. All the, yep, all the brands are there. Um, you just click through to the, the brand that you're looking for and the product line you're looking for. And you really quick, there. what's the coolest new announcement that you've got? Like, top of the head, what's the thing that makes you giggle the most? 
Well, really, it, it, a lot of it does come back to study cam. We didn't get into the whole line there. There is a, um, there's actually a brand new M1, a modular study cam that we're oh, working on too. So very cool. Not quite ready. The website is Tiffin, T-I-F-F-E-N, Tiffin.com, and Russ Abeline is the VP of Product Marketing. Russ, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. One of the cool things is when somebody comes in with a brand new idea and just takes over the industry, and that defines Dave Basuto. Now, he was a mild-mannered school teacher, working quietly in the San Diego school system, training our young, and then all of a sudden, a bolt of lightning hit him somewhere, and he invented the iographer, and the world has not been the same <laughs> since. Hello, Dave. Is, I, I just love that. I'm going to take that piece of uh, audio and play it everywhere I go when I enter a room from now on. It's wonderful. Thank you very much, sir. Good to you see you. Are, it's, it's cool to have you on. Uh, we've had you on the buzz many times, mm -hmm, but to see you in person yes, is sir. a unique treat. Thank you for coming <laughs> Thank you. by. Thank you. Will you uh, describe what the iographer is? So, uh, as a media teacher back in the day, I was, I retired, by the way, and I'll tell you about that. Thank you. Uh, but uh, I, my kids were filming things with their iOS devices, and they were shaky, they were uh, bad audio, they had horrible lighting. And so I started to design a case system that had handles that I could put it onto a tripod, add lighting, microphones, etc. Um, and so I did a 3D model of it. We did a Kickstarter, we got funded, and Forbes wrote an article on me. I got investors, and that's literally like 16 months ago. It's like, it's just exploded. So since that time, uh, we got a deal with Best Buy. Um, no way. So we're going into a oh, thousand. Oh, that's right. I was in a Best Buy two days ago as we were getting ready to leave to come out to Las Vegas, and darned if there wasn't an iographer mini store inside Best Buy and I said I knew him back so when. So we're going into a thousand stores um, in June. Uh, in December they, uh, at a meeting we had they said you need to quit teaching. You... <laughs> so I had to retire from teaching and uh, it was very sad but this has been a full time monster and so we're going we got 16 SKUs now. When we first started we just had the mini case. Um, I brought some toys to show you. We got the new uh, iPhone 6 case that's going to be amazing. Um, but it's got to be a trip. It is, it is just, it's just amazing. It's, the, nobody gets those kind of breaks. The, it's been such dumb luck. A whole, I, I must have done something great. I helped a, a lady across the street when I was a Boy Scout. I don't know what it was, <laughs> but uh, I, the good Lord is looking over me or someone. So You're still having fun? I'm, I'm just so passionate about it. And, and every time there's new devices, I like to see how we can make them better. Um, we're, we're showing a GoPro case now, so we're going to that arena. Uh, because I'm too old and need glasses, I need a monitor for my GoPro, and I need <laughs> handles and etc. So we designed a Iographer Go, and we're going to do a Kickstarter on that too. Cool. Well, let's take a look at the iPhone first. Okay. What have you got? So this is the new iPhone 6 Plus case. I'm going to hold it in front here. And so we've got the iPhone <clears throat> mounted back here. Uh huh. And then on, on the on the lens there, it is an anamorphic lens. Wait, wait. Oh, so you want to see the light? Okay. Where's it? Oh, it's plugged. This is the lens. The and lens it's plugged is right into there. The camera. Mm -hmm. And then what? Oh, so oh. we got a, a Manfrotto uh, LED light on top, and, and then a tripod. We have a tripod mount. Um, there's also a tripod mount on the side, a quarter twenty, so that those people that are doing the live periscopes or the meerkats, you know, we have that available for them now. That exactly. Is so you're, cool. so, you're a handsome man. I should take this. Announcing not shipping. Uh, it is shipping in three weeks. Pricing. Uh, Fifty nine ninety five. And I, Fifty nine ninety five for exactly what? For the case itself, and then lenses, everything separate on the website. So but what? It's all interchangeable. This, is this your lens or something? That is else's? the company Moondog Labs. They're fantastic. They did a very successful Kickstarter. And since I saw them, I don't know if you know the movie Tangerine, that was at Sundance mm -hmm. and one. Yeah. So it was all shot on the iPhone, um, and that they use those lenses. So we've got s roughly sixty bucks for this mm -hmm. thing here. So the lens is going to come out at like one hundred and seventy five. They said uh, the lights light. sixty bucks. Uh, Twenty-five bucks for that little um, um, tripod. A Manfrotto a man tripod. Manfrotto tripod. Twenty-five dollars. That is just yeah. too weird. <laughs> so we've got the Manfrotto tripod, the mm -hmm. Moon Dog, Moon, uh, Moon Dog Labs, Moon Dog Labs, mm -hmm. anamorphic lens, uh, Who, LED light, uh, Manfrotto, what company? Manfrotto. Manfrotto. And then your case. And my case. And what are we calling it? It's the iographer for iPhone 6 Plus because I'm ingenious, right? 
<laughs> you know, this is a little more creative. <laughs> okay, so sh let's, oh my goodness. Still, same Manfrotto tripod. Yeah. We've got you game got controls Go, you here. Got controls, you got the GoPro Hero 6. Shotgun mic. Shotgun mic, plugged into the Hero. Uh, you On got a GoPro? A, you got an HD monitor Doesn't now? this violate some law about GoPro that it can't be bigger than like a postage stamp? All I know is that they said, we want a lot of these when you make them. So oh I was very happy goodness. about that. Look at this. So now for under a grand. The GoPro is the size of a postage stamp. You can't even see the camera in here, and you've managed to bury it in this. You should be ashamed I am yourself. ashamed, let me tell you. I'm very ashamed. <laughs> but now you've got, I mean, for a, a 4K little rig to go and shoot stuff, uh, mm -hmm. GoPro shoots beautiful footage. How much is it? So that's going to be sixty-nine ninety-five. So we're keeping it. And again, it's just, that's for, just the for the cradle. And then we've got <clears throat> monitoring from... Uh, Marshall, Marshall Electronics. So very nice monitor there. So we've got the camera down here mm -hmm. and a monitor up mm -hmm. here. Do you get any sleep? No, that's the whole thing. I want to be uh, wealthy and successful like you, so I know I have to keep at the grindstone. You know, somebody has got to emulate me, and, you know, you that is just some really cool I stuff. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. I'm having a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, people, I mean, the Miami Dolphins are using our stuff, the Boston Celtics, I mean, schools all over the country, and I'm just having a great time. So, What's the most popular product? Uh, the iPad Mini it sells, like, hotcakes. Uh, that's our biggest seller to date. That's the one that um, uh, Best Buy really wanted, so... Um, Where's manufacturing done? Everything's done in Southern California. Really? Because I... Is it still in your garage? Uh, no, it's out of my garage, but it's a nice manufacturing plant now. Oh, Much to my is... wife's happiness. Now, so <laughs> she was getting kind of grouchy. Is it just you, or has you got a team of people? It's myself, and then uh, one of my partners uh, was a, a, a parent of, of one of my students I taught, and he happens to be a, a senior VP at Disney in the legal department, and so he helped me get everything patented, and... And he brought in some money that we needed, and so it's just that he and I and my wife, and and, that's, and I have one old uh, student of mine as my sales rep now. And How are you handling inventory and distribution? Uh, found a fulfillment center in L.A. called uh, Shipwire, and they actually have uh, fulfillment centers all over different parts of the world. So now we have a U.K. center uh, to ship to our, our, yeah, it's crazy. They want, we're going to open an Australian one. I mean, I can't believe I did this and teach at the same time. It's been in 16, a ride. In 16 months. 16 months, yeah. You should be ashamed of I yourself. Am, I am. I am. I don't know <laughs> how it got this way. I, I, I wanted to be a mild-mannered school teacher and retire, you know, 65 and be done. And, but. yeah, that's exactly what you've done. So, it's amazing. It's fun. Where can people go on the web to learn more? They go to iographer.com. That's I-O-G-R-A-P-H-E-R, iographer.com. And Dave Basulto is the Mr. I himself. Larry, you're the king. Thank you so much for uh, having me You have on. done a wonderful job with this. This is just such a great success story. Appreciate Thank it. you so much for Good joining us. Take care. Take care. I've got a ton of brand new training videos showcasing all the new features in Final Cut Pro 10.2, and they're all available today. In fact, we've updated our entire Final Cut training for this release. We added more than 70 new movies covering every major and minor new feature in the software. Then, I figured as long as I was recording, I added new techniques and new ways of working that I've discovered and written about in my newsletter over the years. We've updated our workflow and editing training with 31 new movies and effects with 41 new movies. This makes our Final Cut training the most comprehensive, most up-to-date, and most affordable way to learn everything about this amazing software. It's quick, it's easy, and it's complete. I'm proud of all of my training and especially proud of this one. Get your copy today in our store at LarryJordan.com or even better, become a member of our video training library and get access to all of our training for one low monthly price. Both are incredible values. Thanks. Cinedec manufactures innovative recording systems for use in all video production environments. 
I write these scripts and I can't even read them correctly. Dave, uh, Dane Pearson is a sales engineer for the East Coast for Cinedec. And Dane, thanks for joining us today. Absolutely, my pleasure. How would you define Cinedec? What does the company do? Multi-channel, multi-codec, multi-format recorders, and indeed for virtually every kind of production environment you can imagine in that we support virtually every codec and wrapper you'd ever want to use, whether you're working in Avid or Final Cut or Premiere or any of the other post-production uh, devices that are out there. Uh, we do DNX, we do ProRes, we do DVC for HD, we do J2K, we do Cineform, we do Uncompressed, we do DPX, and so on and so on and so forth. Now, we've had the pleasure <clears throat> over the last couple of days of talking with folks like Out of Boston, folks like uh, Sound Devices, both of which would make video recorders, which would compete against the products that Cinedec has. How, kind, would you, kind of. how would you position Cinedec? Why Cinedec versus some of these other guys? Well, I, I would say we're actually much more similar to something in between a Venice and a Clipster. Um, and in a way, heading up towards EVS, um, we have a four-channel recorder as well as a two-channel recorder. We do master and proxy for both uh, SD and HD. Um, and again, with all those codecs, that none of the other systems support all those, all those codecs natively. So we write those files natively. We write to two different destinations at the same time. So you can be writing, for example, to the internal SSDs, which are hot swappable, as well as to a SAN or a NAS. So you can be writing directly to your central storage, so your edit has direct access to that content. Um, so from that standpoint, it, it's actually quite differential. If you go to the 4K realm, which we also do, we can do 4K 30 and or 4K 60P. And uh, when we do the 4K, we give you the 4K master or the UHD master, HD master, HD proxy, and H.264 streamable file all at the same time. The other really big plus is the file naming is completely unrestricted. So, well, actually, I should say your folders and file naming, so it can be whatever you want. So it sounds to me that the real strength is the flexibility. You, I can decide what codec I want to record in, I can decide what kind of format I want to record in, and you'll support whatever my production needs are. Absolutely. So what have you got that's new for us at the show? Probably the coolest thing is insert editing. Um, is what? Insert editing. Don't, we're, going, we're going back to the tape world. <laughs> um, I mean, you've done a little bit of editing, as, I, as I've heard. Oh, yes. Um, so, yeah, I mean, in, in tape, you know, you're, you're used to being able to go in and say, okay, you know, at 16 minutes, we need to replace that four-second shot with some other shot. Um, in the Avid world, the Final Cut world, et cetera, that's all nice and good in the timeline, but here you've exported out this 75-minute show, and the producer comes down and says, uh, guys, that sound bite is not the right one, or that shot, that can't be in there. That's an embargo shot, or you whatever it is. You make mistakes? Uh, well, let's believe. not call them mistakes. <laughs> um, An inaccurate creative decision. There you go. <laughs> um, so, you know, th th these things happen, and of course they happen all at the wrong time, so you've got like, you know, 10 minutes there or whatever. You're not going to be able to export out that 75-minute show in 10 minutes. It's not going to happen, mm -hmm. and which is the reality with a nonlinear edit system. You can do all kinds of great stuff, but you then have to pump the whole thing back out again. But most of the time I would export this to a, a server somewhere. How does Cinedec fit in in terms of insert editing? Because it would, I can see it in the production process, but once we get into editing and output, where would Cinedec well, once, be? Once that file's been exported, let's say you've exported a ProRes file, right? but you need to go, make it, go back and make a change in it. Right. You don't want to have to re-export that whole thing. We can take that closed file, replace that shot in the file. Got it. Replace that audio in the file. Um, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of funny. It's, very not, it's not very exciting. Uh -huh. But at the same time, it's awe-inspiring because it's like, oh, so I don't have to like re-export this whole thing? No, you can just go in and no. replace that video, replace that audio, because you're done. Tr it's trivial if you've got the file inside your nonlinear editor, but once it's out of the editor, making a change to it can be really difficult. Hey, it, well, it's time-consuming. And, you know, particularly, if, if obviously, if, you know, the more rendering that has to go on in order to get it output, the longer it takes. And, you know, if there's a highly, you know, an effects-heavy program, then it just gets worse and worse. So what do we need to be able to do that? Um, actually, there's, there's actually going to be two ways. Right now, you would need actually a Cinedec, and you control it just like a, a Sony tape deck. We, in mm -hmm. fact, we emulate a 5500. <laughs> um, so when, when, you go, when, you go, when you go into your India, like you have a digital cut tool, you choose the Sony 5500 for the proper frame rate. Yeah. Open your digital cut tool, and you say, okay, you know, I want to digital, digital cut my show. You've laid it out into whatever codec you want, because obviously we support like every codec. Mm -hmm. um, and then when that miraculous time comes when you've got to change something, you load that file up in the, in the Cinedec and say, okay, this is the file I need to change. Again, your digital cut tool, in and out point in timeline, digital cut, boom, just like on tape. Except I heard you say at the very beginning, for now, you have to have a Cinedec. That implies that in the future, something's going to change. Very, very soon, we're going to be coming out of so with a software-only standalone application that will give you the insert edit capability, and that'll be file to file. So you'll have your complete program file, and then your rendered out replacement piece, drop that in. Um, that, that standalone package will also include a bunch of rewrapping and transcoding and file repair tools and that sort of stuff. So it'll be a standalone package that people oh, will be able to get separately. Oh, that's so cool. Have you just uh, announced when that's going to happen? 
I can't really give a specific. I'm guessing summertime, but and, we're and, talking this year. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but it, and it probably because there's a lot of interest in the insert editing, it'll probably come out in phases. So the insert editing will come out, and then as the other tools get implemented, and you'll get a, an update that'll include the other tools. That is so cool. What else you got that's new with the show? Um, the other good thing, well, we're showing the ZX, which is one of our newer recorders. We actually did show it um, at the HPA uh, recently, but it's a, a modular version of our four-channel MX. It starts at a much lower price point um, because you can pick and choose both software and hardware, so you build the system you want, so you end up mm -hmm. at a lower price point, but all the features you need. Um, but there's also an eight-channel option for that. So one box, eight channels of encode, and again, you know, a full variety of codecs. Um, so it basically drops the encoding cost down to about five grand uh, per channel, a little bit lower. Now, as a sales guy, what feature is it that gets most people's eyes to light up? Well, first of all, I'm really happy to say I'm not the sales guy. Which You're sales, sales engineer. engineer which, I'm so sorry. Well, no, that, it, I, it's, it, it's, not, it's not a matter of that. It's more a matter of I, I was the sales guy. And I'm not a sales guy. <laughs> that's really more what it's, what well, it's all about. As you're about. talking with customers, what is it? What feature that, that Synodec has it gets their eyes hey, to light it, up? It really depends on what they're doing. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, the insert editing has been really big on the show floor t for the last the last two days, or you know, yesterday and today. Um, but you know, for the folks who are doing multi-cam productions, just you know, the fact that we're writing, you know, for example, anger management. Um, they they record using a couple Synodecs. They're recording directly to, to their Avid ISIS because you can run the client on our machine, so you've got the full SAN capability. They're going straight into edit with the DNX 145, and they're cranking out shows twice as fast as they would have been able to in any other workflow. And the amount of money they saved over 90 episodes was like two and a quarter million dollars. Wow! If you when you include all the tapes and the costs for having all the you know the PAs and the and the transcodes and the rewraps and all the other nonsense that goes on around managing the tapes, it's a lot of money. So you know it really depends on what they're doing, and uh, you know that the fact that you can choose your codec based on what you know what the particular needs are of the day, you know for a rental facility, it, it's it's almost a no-brainer. You know, it's like, oh, well, you know, today we're, we're providing stuff for whatever, you know, pick your company, and they want MOV wrapped ProRes. The next guys, they want, you know, Op 1A wrapped um, uh, APC Intra, and so on and so forth. Cool. So really Dane, flexibility. What, what website can we go to to learn more? Cinedeck.com, C I N E D E C K. That's all. And, we, and one we've got word. a new site. All one word C I N E D E C K, Cinedeck.com. Dane Pearson, sales engineer, East Coast for Cinedeck. Dane, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Take care. This is the fifth digital production buzz that has originated from the 2015 NAB show in Las Vegas, Nevada. And what a group of guests we had today. We started with Andy Liebman, the founder and CEO of EditShare, Russ Abilene, the VP of Product Marketing for the Tiffin Company, Dave Basulto, the CEO and founder of Iographer, and what a success story he is. 16 months ago, he's teaching middle school in San Diego. Now he's running a multinational corporation <laughs> out of his closet. And then we had Dane Pearson, sales engineer for the East Coast for Synodec, talking about new digital recorders. But this is not the end of our coverage at NAB. We've got another live show at 4 o'clock today, plus three more tomorrow on Wednesday, and two on Thursday. Plus, don't forget, our evening reports, an hour of special interviews, unique, separate from all of our live shows, that post at 7 o'clock every evening, Monday through Friday this week, because there's just so much stuff to talk about. And I'm anxious to share it with you. My name is Larry Jordan, and thanks for watching the digital production buzz at the 2015 NAB show. The Buzz would like to thank Debbie Price, our event producer, One Beyond for the cameras and video streaming system, Advantage Video Systems for the onstage monitor, and our incredible Buzz production team for making all of these shows possible. The digital production buzz at the 2015 NAB show was made possible by supporting sponsors. Shutterstock, a global marketplace for royalty-free images and videos. With over 2 million royalty-free HD and 4K video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. And by One Beyond, leaders in digital video systems for streaming, archive, and storage. Additional sponsors include LarryJordan.com, helping media pros find work, improve their skills, and keep clients happy.